geometry again. That's where we left off last week. Uh, we did a lot of area on the grid. We're going to continue with that for a warm up. And then we want to turn that into some formulas. I need everybody to face me, so that means you need to put your pencils down, turn your chair around, stop fiddling with things, and get ready to think hard. Okay? Some are, some are easy, some aren't so easy. First, I just put some names in these shapes. We'll do a vocabulary list of names. You don't have to worry too much about them today, but you should know the difference between triangles and quadrilaterals. So quad means four. The three shapes at the top are quadrilaterals. Tri, like a tricycle, means three, so there's three sides. These two are triangles. But even more than that, there's specific types of quadrilaterals. So this first shape here is a rectangle. So Naya, why is it a rectangle? Because um, it's a rectangle. <laughs> why, is, <laughs> why is this a rectangle? Yeah. Because why? It's like not like... Okay, so it has opposite equal sides, so that's true, where a square would have all sides equal, so this, this side is equal to this side, sides, and this side is equal to this side. That's not quite enough to make it a rectangle, but that's part of it. What else makes it a rectangle? Let me ask you this. Why isn't this a rectangle? It has opposite sides equal, doesn't it? Like this side here, that's the same as this side here. Do you agree? Yes. And this length of this side is the same as the length of this side, but that's not a rectangle. What, what's the difference? Um, a rectangle is like Long, long going this way and then short on the sides. So, it's not a rectangle anymore? Wait, it's still a rectangle. <laughs> okay, I'm cat. Why not? Uh, because the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. A parallelogram is slanted, right? So, we're really looking for a special kind of angle in the corner. What kind of angle is that, Noel? A right angle. So, see, this is now some people like, especially like. Your old school um, architects and engineers, they call that a square angle. Probably Mr. Paul would call it a square angle um, or, and a right angle. They call it both. But it's easy to think about. The sides being equal is one criteria of a rectangle, the opposite sides being equal. But the other criteria is each angle has to be square. It has to be the shape of right angle. And over here, that's not a right angle. And this one is acute, right? So they're all quadrilaterals in the top row, but only one of them is a rectangle. The other two are parallel grids. So you should start to get used to those words. Let's put your pens down. The caps on, pens down. Okay? Triangles. Let's talk about triangles. This is a right scalene triangle. So what what is the right part mean? Uh, Maddie? It has that square angle, right? So if it's not a right triangle, then it has to be an obtuse triangle like this one over here. Because it has an angle that's bigger than the square angle. And if it's smaller than it's obtuse. Or if it's like this one, even though I didn't ask you to figure out the area of that one. This is an acute triangle because all three angles are smaller than a right angle. Yeah. So we call it acute. So we can classify a triangle by the number, by the, by the angles. So it would either be right, obtuse, or acute. We could also classify it by the sides. So Catherine, what about the sides? Do you know like the difference between a scalene and an isosceles or? Uh, I don't think so. Did you have a question for me? Yeah. How come that one is an obtuse triangle and two of the three sides are? Yes, a good question. Same with this, right? You don't have three right angles. So you, if you have one right angle, we call it a right triangle. If you have one obtuse, then two. You have, uh, just one obtuse, you, 
you we call it an obtuse triangle. And if you have neither an obtuse or a right angle, all of them have to be acute for it to be an acute triangle. Okay, Faith. Um, can I say the right? Yes, please, okay. about the sides. Uh, yeah, so for, I can't remember the specific name for uh, all three sides being the same. Equilateral. Yeah. I don't have one of those up here yet. Equilateral uh, triangle, all three sides are the same, like I said. Uh, scalene triangle, two sides are the same and one is different. No, that's isosceles. Oh. So that would be this one. Scalene oh, yes. is all of them are different. Scalene is all sides different. Okay. So, Maddie, what's an isosceles? Okay. And Carson, what's a scalene? Scalene is about the side length. No. So angles. The angle that you're talking about, that makes it a right triangle. But since all the sides are different, it, it's scalene. So scalene is, goes with all sides different. These go together. Okay. The tipped over that you're talking about, this makes, makes it obtuse. It's an obtuse um, because that angle is bigger than 90. Okay. So so let's talk about area. Raise your hand if you had the area for any one of the top three shapes. Okay. So Elizabeth, give me the first one. Good. 10 centimeters squared. Okay. And that's, how did you know that? Either or work, right? If you count the sides, there's two. There are two squares high, and if you count the base, it's five squares long. And if you actually look at the, if you can look at the hidden bit, you could actually see there's ten squares. But really. She's right. Um, if you can count the sides, then you can multiply. That's right. And so that brings up the area of a rectangle. We just take the base and we multiply it by the height. The base is five units and the height is two units. Base times height gives you the area of a rectangle. Does that make sense? Okay. Hayes, next one. I got six. You got six for the problem two? Yeah. Raise your hand if you agree. Okay, how did you do that, Hayes? That's right. I agree. Uh, I got um, the I got the the ones that are in half. So yeah. you kind of did the division that we worked on last week? Yeah. These guys, you sort of look like that? Yeah, and then I just uh, connected those two into one block. Yeah, that makes a whole. And then I just, uh, did, um, and these, that makes one hole, this makes another hole, that's two, three, four, five, six. There's lots of ways to do it. That's, that's definitely one of them. Okay. Who knows the formula for parallel graphs? Okay, so Kat, did you do it a different way? So let's go back to the other thing we did last week. Remember how we chopped off part? Yeah. And then we moved it over here. That's what I did. Yeah. And so then this part over here was gone. Oh, that's not actually what I did. But I mean, in your brain, that's what's going on, right? Yeah. So it ends up being the same thing as a rectangle. And the formula for a rectangle was the base, right? Which is that long? Yeah. Times the height, which is this long. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah. So... If we get rid of some of the shading that I just put in here and some of this stuff, we're left with the base and the height. 
And how long is the base of this parallelogram? Three. And the height is two. Two. So if it's like a rectangle, which it is, you multiply the base times the height, and you get the six centimeters squared. That's so much easier. It is easier. It doesn't help you so much, though, with these, right? No. So you want to have both skills. Also, it doesn't have as much meaning at first. But you're right. We like easy, and we, we, we really rely on formulas as long as they're not only some formula, as long as you can understand them. So a parallelogram, you just take the base and the height, and you multiply them. Now, here's the thing. You have to be able to figure out where the base and the height are. So look up at this next one, because this one's a little bit harder. So, okay, so um, who haven't I heard from today? I have two. Nick? How about you? Can you tell? Did you get an answer for number three? Yes. What did you get? I got... I want to keep this under 20 minutes today. I like to have my timer going. While he's looking for that, can you look at the this parallelogram here and notice the base is I highlighted in pink and the height? I could think of it inside too, right? It's how far apart <coughs> the bases are. That's what the height is. How far apart the two bases are. So sometimes the height's drawn inside, but sometimes the height is drawn outside. And when it's drawn outside, it doesn't have to touch let's move that. I just wanted to say it's they don't have to touch the base and the height. Do you see that? Yeah. But what they do have to do, what's important is they do have to form that square angle. So when it's inside, when your height's inside, you're always looking for a square angle, which is why we don't use the slant. We don't use the slanted side to find area, ever. Looking for square angles for area. So even if the height is outside, like this, it still forms a right angle that's in line with the base. It doesn't have to touch the base. So what'd you get for this one, Nick? I got eight. So he got eight. Let's test it with the formula. And this is all in centimeters squared, right? That's confused a little bit. Um, the top is of the the top of the base is a little different than the bottom of the base. It's actually not. Does it help if I move it better in position? Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Um, so let's take a highlighter, I'll take a highlighter here, and I'm going to highlight the base here. How many units is yeah. the base? Two, two, right? So two centimeters. And the height has to be the distance between the two bases. So here are the two bases. So the height has to be the distance. And if I drew it right here, it looks kind of weird. But technically, that's the distance. That's how apart, apart the two bases are. So usually, you'll see it outside if it doesn't fit perfectly inside. Does that make sense? Yes. So the height is how many units? Four. 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 And so when I multiply four times two, I get? Eight. Eight. All right? So we just used our formula for the parallelogram. Base time height and the rectangle was? Base time height. What about the triangle? What about the triangle, right. Uh -huh. I Could it learn it? Have, oh. So let's think about that. Who has an area for number four? Answer, Annalise. Three. Raise your hand if you got three square centimeters. Yeah. Okay, you're right. So Annalise, did you think about the rectangle like we did last week? Did you kind of visualize this rectangle? 
Right, so this rectangle you can see has six square units. That's right. So the triangle is half, right? Half of that, three square units. So bring back that highlighter. The base of the rectangle is how long? Two. And the height of the rectangle, remember it has to form a square angle. Right, like that, right? Not like that. Like this. So the height of the rectangle is how much? Three. If it were just the rectangle, we'd say two times three. But we know it's half. So we have to divide it by two. two. So let's cross out. You could count, cross out in both two, so it would just be three. So if you really want. Yeah, you gotta be careful, but you you're actually you're correct there. So we say this triangle has an area of three centimeters squared. Why do you divide by two? Because that triangle only takes up half of the rectangle. We use the rectangle formula. Okay, so we can always so every triangle is half of some rectangle. Even this triangle over here is half of some rectangle. It's much harder to see. But we did this um, last week. It took a lot of work to think it through. But for example, I could, I can't really see that, but how about this? There we go. Like you can see that this triangle piece over here is half of this rectangle, right? Also what I did. Hold on. Oh, sorry. So that's eight units. So this little piece on the white, remember we did the white? The white piece would be um, four units out in here, right? And then if I get rid of the big fat red line, the whole rectangle is one, two, three, four by one, two, three, four, five, right? So 20. So that means this area up here is 10. 10. So 10 plus 4 make 14, right? Yes. And the whole thing has to add up to how much? So 20. 20. So that means I need that 6. 6 more, right? So we could do it with a picture, but watch how, watch how the formula is going to work. So do you guys agree that this is 6 centimeters yeah. squared in the, rec in the yellow? So let's test out what the formula is. We have to find the base, which is right here. So how long is the base? Three, three, three centimeters. And I'll move these guys out of the way. I have to find the height, and the height is going to be how far away the base is from the tip of the triangle. So I stop when I get down to where the base is. And that's four. And that's four. So multiply three times four and what do you get? Twelve. Twelve. Divided in half is six. Six. So I did base times height divided by two. Twelve divided by two and I got the six that I got from all those fancy little rectangles. So no matter what, you always multiply the area by two. Five. Seven. Right, Faith. Five. So no matter what, to find the area of a triangle, you multiply the base and the height, and divide your answer by two, no matter what. So when I give you a worksheet today, I want you to write those three formulas down. And maybe in under 20 minutes. That's pretty good. So we're going to talk about the worksheet. Um, I'll pass it out. What time are we out here? Okay. The goal of the worksheet today is to get measurements with a centimeter ruler and take the math work home. You only have four problems. I'm going to help you with them at first, and then you're going to finish them at home. But there's a lot of measuring. So if you count all the measuring, it seems like more than four problems. 